This will be the first new launch in Woodlands after 12 years. Before we get started, help me like this video so that you can reach more people out there. Here are some things I'll be going through with you today. Number one, the project information. Number two, why this project is mainly for own stay, but there's actually an investment angle inside. Number three, where would the buyers come from in the future? Number four, would the RTS 9 affect your future exit? And lastly, number five, should you buy or not? So to give you a bit of context about this project itself, actually we have 348 units ranging from 1 plus study to up to 4 premium plus study. So actually all these things is very important, especially this project has a good mix of units. For most projects, it's pretty much similar. But one thing I do like about this project is because this land size that is not the biggest, we actually do have a tennis court inside, which is very rare in today's context because some projects of this size doesn't give you the tennis court. And on top of that, we do have a childcare inside this development. Number two, why this project is mainly for own stay demand. Let's take a look at the two bed, two bath layout that is very unique in this project itself. So you take a look as you enter the unit. One thing I like is that there is actually a kitchen that's enclosed. And moving forward, right, the project is actually having a dumbbell layout where one of the rooms are on the side. The other is on the other side, which is actually very unique because most projects, when they give you a two bed, two bath, sometimes the toilet, they do not interlink to having an ensuite for both of the bedrooms. And the size is 624 square feet because the aircon latch is not counted because this is actually a GFA harmonized project. So as we move further ahead, we can take a look at the two bed plus study. This layout itself is pretty comfortable, especially we look at the master bedroom. It's having quite a large bedroom, including the study area over at this corner, which is actually very good for families that want to have their workspaces. And for example, the husband or wife probably having a rest. Then you can put a curtain over here and can use the study while you are present at the same location. We can take a look at the next two bed plus study layout. So this is actually the show flat layout itself. One thing is very unique is that the study is actually open study right here, which is actually very unique because for this itself, you can do a conversion to a three bed compact. What they can do is to actually have a door or wall being, partition wall being placed over here where this can be like a bedroom and they adjust their dining area over here lah, and their TV they put at this corner. There's a lot of opportunities and all that. But of course, with proper ID and all that, you can actually make this unit into a very beautiful home for your family. The next layout that we have is actually a three-bed deluxe. And this three-bed deluxe is pretty unique because the kitchen is enclosed. And on top of that, you have this privacy area when you enter the main door. All the bedrooms can fit a queen-size bed and the master comes attached with a bathroom. Lah. So this is actually pretty common for a three-bedroom. So as we move along, we take a look at the next unit type, which is also a three-bedroom deluxe, slightly bigger. We can actually see that, as always, even the aircon latch is not counted as the floor area. Lah. So with all this, right, if you look at previously, these layouts would be at the additional 50 square feet just to achieve such a layout. So moving along, we can take a look at the three-bed plus study. Also very uniquely done, similar to the two-bed plus study that I was talking about, the show flat layout, where the study is actually over here and the dining area is over here with a dry kitchen and a wet kitchen. So there's a lot of opportunities for families to convert such a layout because there's no walkway at all. You can take a look, this whole area over here is actually all usable spaces. So these layouts is actually very important for families if they tend to want to look at possibilities like how can you look at living in a family layout because it's 904 square feet only. So the next layout is the three bedroom premium plus study. So one of the difference is that you actually do get a very wide living room area if you choose not to erect or not to do the study and you can actually have a very open landscape layout which most families do like as well. This is more traditional where you actually have the WC and the yard area behind over here with a bomb shelter as the storeroom as well. So this is actually very family oriented project like I mentioned to you earlier because all these layouts are more easy to have families wanting to live inside. So as we take a look, the next one, one of the layouts that is also similar, we have a very wide living room area. This is actually the three bed premium plus study. A little bit of difference here and there, lah. different facings and all that. So as we move ahead, we can take a look at the four deluxe plus study. So this four deluxe plus study, right? if you take a look at the size, it's actually only 1173. Honestly, it's much smaller than most uh, projects. But however, because it's a GFA harmonized unit, all the aircon ledges 
shown here is not included in your floor area because this is a second harmonized project and based on what we saw in Lantern Mansion itself this project has a better layout if you compare for the bigger unit types because they still give you a bomb shelter like a storeroom on top of that you have a yard area and a WC behind one thing that many buyers feedback before is that when you have helpers toilet right in the walkway in the front is not that comfortable. So this layout does suit that demand. So I personally also bought into Lantern Mansion when the project is like when we first look at the GFA Harmonize because the layout is more efficient. We choose a three bedroom plus flexi because we felt that the layout is much more comfortable as a family. When we look at the four bedroom unit types, it's a bit weird where you enter the main door and your helper's toilet is right there. Many buyers that came through the show flat couldn't accept so that is something that Norwood did a very good job. So actually one of the most efficiently done layout for the four bedroom is actually the four premium plus study, which also is our show flat. We actually have a very nice dining area, which of course, if you want to take a look, you can actually contact me where I can arrange a time for you to come down to take a look at this very beautifully done unit over here. So you can see the dining area is pretty wide, pretty spacious. And on top of that, as we enter the kitchen, you do have your bomb shelter, which doubles up as a storeroom, then the WC. And on top of that, you have a study down here, which if in the event you want to convert, they show you that the wall can be removed such that you can have a larger bedroom. So this is actually pretty functional, pretty convenient. And especially there's walk-in wardrobe where husband and wife don't need to worry about sharing the cupboards. Lah. This is pretty much very family-oriented layout, where it's more traditional. And to me, I feel that in Woodlands, this layout will perform very well because we are dealing with people that are used to big houses. As an investor, if you're looking to buy a one-bedroom plus study, I would actually share with you that it will be a bit difficult to exit subsequently because we have to look at the own stay demand, especially we are in the Woodlands area. So buying a larger unit type may be suitable for you if you plan to look at the investment angle. However, if you are a bachelor or bachelorette, if you want to move out of your parents' place to actually get your first home, the one plus study layout is actually pretty decent in our Norwood Grant where the study can double up as a storeroom if you require. So as an investor, right, if you're looking at one bedroom for investment or even one plus study for investment, I wouldn't advise you to do so because the future sub-sale exit may be difficult because of the demands that we are looking at in the current market. So if you plan to do an investment, actually buying an own stay unit type, which is actually our two-bed plus two bath, is able for you to actually have a better buyer pool to exit because you actually have more families looking to buy. Then, of course, not saying that one plus study is no good, because it's suitable for bachelors and bachelorettes, especially if you want to move out of your parents' place and enjoy the conveniences of being in a condo and on top of that, the lifestyle. <sighs> okay, let's take a break over here before continuing the last three pointers. If you have any comments that you felt that you wanted to share with me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you want to have other analysis done, feel free to contact me over here where I can share with you more alternatives. So where would our future buyers come from, especially when we look at the BTO statistics? When we move forward, right, this is actually the current Woodlands housing stock, which is actually going to be MOP within this time frame. As you can see, a lot of them is 2025, 2027, all the way to 2033. So all these are all the future buyers that will be coming to uh, look at this area because we actually have a range of two room all the way to three gen itself. So as we move along, this is actually something very important because to me, one thing that we have to understand is all these people, not all the times can be buying from us, but we have to look at where do they get the main ingredient, which is capital appreciation from their first property. So for example, you buy a four-room flat at 350000 and subsequently you actually put it on the market at 650000 You do have at least a 300000 capital appreciation on top of your current savings plus your income increase to actually buy the next property. This is actually very important for the ability to upgrade. This is actually some charts that I've done. Like most of the time, we have three room owners, of course, not moving to a condo because sometimes it may be harder to afford. But however, they can buy a four room flat from somewhere else and this four room owner will buy a five room. Then the five room owners will buy a maybe a normal grand four bed plus study. So this is actually a flow of where the funds will actually shift around. So let me break it down onto how can you look at this easily in terms of the bite size uh, profile itself. New BTOs, why is it very important? Because you can see this three room BTO 
They bought 250k, sell 450k, it's a profit to them. But they take the profit plus a bit of their savings, then they bought into a four-room flat at 650,000. Then subsequently, this four-room BTO owner, which is now a buyer already, he buys a five-room flat. He buys at 750k. Then our five-room BTO owner also have the capital to buy something else. So subsequently, they can buy maybe a Norwood grant, three-bit, sub-sale itself, where in three years' time, all the owners that bought maybe decide to sell. So with the profit again, this guy can buy a sub-sale for Deluxe in Norwood Grand. So after all these steps of transitioning and moving, transitioning and moving, someone that buys in a larger unit could probably buy a landed terrace subsequently at $5 million. So actually this is a step of capital moving around the market. So in terms of the people moving around the same project or even the same area, stay tuned for my next video where I'll touch on that. Would the RTS line affect Woodlands properties? So as we take a look at this, let me ask you a question. As a family, would you move to JB together with two of your kids, which is studying in primary school? They every day have to travel into Singapore to study, especially with the school timing at 6.45. How early have they have to wake up to come into Singapore? So this is actually something that many parents or I would say many investors overlook because they do not understand what's happening on the ground. A lot of my friends that actually stay in Woodlands commented to me saying that they thought of the idea moving into JB but however when they look at the logistical part of it they felt that it's very difficult and I remember one of the situation back then about three four years ago where I had one of my clients that actually did this before but the family came back into Singapore to stay back into Woodlands because he felt that it's a very big hassle, especially they were talking about the blue school bus that every time brings the kids to Singapore. And they, they mentioned it's not easy because you think about coming into Singapore, exiting Singapore, of course with the RTS9, it does help the ease of transportation, but it's always very difficult because in this RTS9, we have to understand whether or not Singapore's government want to raise our position as a hub. So when we look at this itself, right, we analyse in deeper details. There's a lot of factors that actually came about with this RTS9 because along the time, right, in Singapore, we are having a very big difficulty because our back-end manufacturing uh, sectors is actually having a tough time to keep up with the requirements of productions. So having JB and easy access, right, actually helps a lot of Singapore businesses to have a competitive advantage where they can actually have their front end talking to customers and having the uh, HQ within Singapore. But the back end operations is back in Johor, which actually helps all these operations because like a manager can go into JB to actually see the factory, tour the factory and come back home at night to come back to Singapore to his family. Yeah, so actually to me, this RTS line does not actually impact Singapore that much. But however, it helps businesses to grow further. And of course, in the process, creates a lot more jobs for Singaporeans. And lastly, should you buy or not? So the pros and cons of this project. The pros of this project is three minutes walk to MRT. On top of that, we are actually having a good mix of units where it starts with one plus study all the way to four premium plus study. Then importantly for these projects, it's having a lot more families wanting to live inside because it's very near to the young estate of Woodlands, especially with five primary schools within a short distance away of one kilometre. So we are within a short distance away to the Woodlands Health Campus. We are within one stop away to Woodlands MRT, which is the Woodlands Regional Centre, especially with the government's plan of rejuvenation in Woodlands. You actually do have a very nice uh, neighbourhood mall at Vista Point, which is a short distance away, where you can get your day-to-day -day groceries. And on top of that, it's a HDB type mall itself where it's actually very convenient for you to use. Then you do get heartlands amenities right nearby to us, especially with all the food choices and even coffee shops that you can get within a short proximity away. Not like many other places that you need to travel a distance to get to them. So let's talk about the cons. Singapore Sports School is moving out, which will affect your rentability and all that. However, if you are planning for own stay, this would unlikely be affecting you. Point number two is on the cons itself. We do not have 100% shelter to MRT, but however, it's just a short walk away. Then on top of that, we are in a bit of Ulu part of Singapore, la, which many people also may find it as a con. But importantly is we are in the up-and-coming area of Woodlands where this Woodlands South is having a lot of future transformation. So maybe in our nearby blocks, we do not have the clusters of amenities. But however, we do have other areas that are a few clusters away. Lah. 
So in conclusion, if you are planning to look at this project as an own stay project, this can be your first home or even an upgrade from your current place in Woodlands. What's important is that at least you are looking at a pent-up demand, especially for the past 12 years, we do not have a launch in Woodlands. Personally, I feel that this project will perform well. Of course, that is something that is very important, that we need to move ahead with the new uh, regulations and this project is actually one of the projects in the heartlands. This is the second project for GFA Harmonize, but in the heartlands this is the first project. Lah. So in conclusion, actually this project personally I feel will perform very well because the projects do have a lot of own stay unit types where families can actually look at the units and accept such a layout. This area actually do have a lot of future transformations. And importantly, we do have a few land plots that's upcoming in this Woodland South where we actually have a new EC upcoming as well where the land actually will be bidded in October. So stay tuned if you want to find out more into what will happen if this land is being bidded and how does it affect you as a private property owner in this cluster. And lastly, this is one of the first projects in the heartlands that actually have the GFA Harmonize which is showing us new layouts where upcoming every project will be similar. Again, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to this channel and hit the notifications bell to get notified for more videos like this. And if you require a deeper analysis of Norwood Grant, feel free to hit me up. Cheers everyone!